This Let's Edit with Media Composer first tutorial is brought to you by Video Guys, the leading reseller of video editing and production and post-production equipment for over 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, motion tracking, rotoscoping, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime-based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with MC First tutorial. And in this lesson, I want to keep the ball rolling here. In our introductory lesson, we sort of got an overview of the Media Composer First interface. And I did mention your settings very briefly. Now. Settings are something that are exceptionally important to set before you start editing because there are some things in your settings that you are going to need to be made aware of. For example, your bins autosave, that's an important one, your keyboard settings, and the media creation tool. These are all essential tools that you're going to need to understand what they do before you start editing so you don't run into problems down the road. Okay, let's keep the introduction short. Let's just get into Media Composer first, and let's get started. All right, now before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get you up and running in Media Composer first, but what do you do when you're ready to take the plunge into the full version of Media Composer? You're going to want to make the transition from one application to another as smoothly as possible. If this is the situation you're in right now, why don't you head on over and check out my Mac Pro training series on the full version of Media Composer where Lesson 1 will get you up and running in about an hour. All right, so let's Command or Alt and Tab into Media Composer first. And let's head over to our Settings tab at the top of the project window. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that we're going to talk about some of these settings, and we're not going to talk about every parameter, but just the important ones that you are going to want to need to know. Now, you'll notice that with the audio ducking setting that we have one basically option that says Use Marks and then a bunch of advanced parameters. Now. I'm going to dedicate a specific le lesson to audio ducking in a future lesson. Keep that in mind. What audio ducking basically does is automatically dip music or another sound channel down underneath a voiceover, for example. So instead of you having to go in and do all of those edits or those audio dips manually, you can have Media Composer first do that for you. Next, and probably the most important setting is your bin setting. And the one thing that you're going to want to get in and make sure you set right away is that auto save interval. Now, for me, five minutes is pretty good. We're at a point where the applications, Media Composer specifically, are pretty stable. Now, with Media Composer first, it is a stripped down version of Media Composer, and I haven't run into too many problems. So I'd probably say keep that auto save interval somewhere around the five minute mark. Now, the next option I want to talk about is the double click. What is double clicking on a clip in your bin going to do? Well, for me, I want it to load into the source or the record monitor. Now, source for a clip, the record monitor for a sequence. Now, you might want to have that open in a new pop-up monitor, but to be honest, in most cases, inside the source or record monitor is good enough. Now, I want to skip down towards the bottom of the bin settings window. We're going to talk more about this one specifically when we do talk about bins. You'll see that we, ha that we have the ability to show border colors and to show icons. Now, again, like I said, keep that in the back of your head. We're going to circle back and talk about that when we talk about bins. Now, you're going to notice that after the bin setting, we have something called a bin view. And right now, it's set to be basic. What does that represent? Well, let me give you a little sneak peek of bins. I'm going to come down to our clips bin. And what that view represents is inside of our, actually, let's pick one that actually has something in it. And this actually has a sequence in it here. And what I want to do is just switch over to list view. And if you notice down at the bottom, we have a little drop down called untitled. Well, that's telling me right now that I'm using an untitled bin view. But what I have the ability to do is to get in and to change that to a basic bin view. Now, we're going to talk specifically again about bin views. You're going to hear me say that a lot. We're going to talk specifically about bin views when we talk about bins, because this is how you're going to get in and tailor Media Composer to show you the information that you need to see. OK, let me just close this bin. Let's come back to our settings here. Now, I'm going to skip over full screen playback. To be honest, I don't ever really use that. All of the playback that I use, I use right from within my sequence or my record monitor. Now, the general settings, let's double click on that, because the one thing you're going to want to set in here 
is that starting time code. Now you might want to put bars and tone, you might want to put a little bit of black, you might want to have a two beep. This is where you can get in and tailor that starting time code to whatever you want it to be. In our case, we'll just leave it at the one hour mark. Don't worry, we can change that at any time without having to come into our settings. We can actually change that right from over here within the sequence window. Now the import option, you'll see that we can get in and we can make size adjustments to our imported images. We can even get in and deal with alpha channels. You'll see that we can invert on import where white equals opaque. Now, if you're not familiar with opaque, opaque means that it's not transparent. That means that any matte element, the white will not be transparent. We can not invert where black is opaque, or we can just ignore the alpha channel altogether. And if you're bringing in still images, like for example, a JPEG of an end card that you want to use, in here you can get in and set what you'd like the duration of that clip to be. What you can also set in here is how Media Composer is going to deal with sequentially numbered files, so basically a target sequence. Now you'll notice that we have an audio tab as well, where we can get in and make sure that we set up our multi-channel audio import options, as well as how we want to apply attenuation or gain effects on import, and we can automatically center pan monophonic clips. But to be honest, I don't want Media Composer doing any of that. I want to get in and set all of that myself. I'm just going to say cancel. Now, to be honest, the interface, this is more of a stylistic thing. What would you like your highlight colors to be? What would you like your timeline's background color to be? What would you like the project background to be? This is where you can get in, and to be honest, you could make the Media Composer interface all of the colors of the rainbow if you like. Now, this one is specifically a personal preference. I'm not going to get in and say you should do this or you should do that. To be honest, I prefer my entire interface as gray because I've been editing with Media Composer since back in a time when we didn't have any of this. Okay, So I'm just going to cancel out of that. I'm actually going to skip over the keyboard setting for right now. I'm going to come back to it in just a second. Now. In most cases, many of the ways that we get media into Media Composer is by linking to it. We're going to use the source browser to link to media. You'll notice that we have a lot of the same options in here that we did inside of the import option, but this is dealing specifically with linking to a clip, not creating a new piece of media, just referencing a piece of media that's on our hard drive. Now, the settings are more or less the same, except we do have one option where we can get in and adjust the properties of the new clip to reformat them to either stretch, pillar box or letter box, center crop, or center and keep its current size. Okay, I'm just going to leave that right now to be stretch. Now, a big one, I'm just going to skip over media cache because to be honest, I haven't really had to get in and do much as far as the media cache goes. This is where you can get in and clear up cache from thumbnails or the source browser or even video memory settings. Okay. But like I said, I don't really do too much with that because I've been working on big projects and I've really never had to get in and clear that. But a big one, media creation. Now, what exactly does media creation mean? Well, in situations where you're going to consolidate or transcode media, that means to take media that lives on your hard drive and convert it into Avid Media. This is where you're going to get in and choose what the default media creation setting is going to be as well as what drive it's going to be going to. Now, I always like to send things to an external hard drive. This way, if I ever need to go on the road, I can grab that hard drive, stick it in my bag, go. I can download Media Composer first wherever I am, start working right away. Now, keep in mind that the way that my project is currently set up, the video resolutions are all based on standard definition resolutions. Okay, now how do I know that? I'm just going to cancel out of Media Creation. I'm going to come to the Format option. And you'll notice that my format option is grayed out. It's by default set to standard def, but don't worry. That's going to change when we start bringing clips in to work with in our timeline. So we're going to need to circle back to the media creation setting once we start bringing in media. Now, the last option we have is the timeline. In most cases, you're going to leave this set to its default. You're going to want to make sure that you have auto patching and auto monitoring turned on and for me, I always like to, in my new sequences by default, have one video track and two mono audio tracks. You can, of course, get in and adjust this however you want. You'll also notice that we have a display option where we can get in and set some display settings for our timeline as well. Okay. Now, let's circle back to probably the biggest one other than what your bin autosave is going to be. And that is your keyboard settings. 
Now, I'm going to come back up here. You'll notice we actually have a secondary keyboard setting that I'm actually just going to remove. Okay. Now, I'm going to double click on my keyboard setting. Here is the keyboard layout for Media Composer first. Now, the only thing that's kind of odd about it is the fact that I can't actually get in and change anything. Okay. I can only get in and seemingly just click on things. So how do we actually get in and adjust our keyboard? Well, the keyboard setting actually works in conjunction with another tool that's not readily apparent, okay? To get at this tool, we need to head to our appropriately named tools dropdown, and I'm gonna come down to the command palette. Now I'm just gonna put the command palette right up above our keyboard setting. Now this command palette basically represents every button command that is available inside of Media Composer. And if you want to get in and adjust your keyboard settings, let's say, for example, in my keyboard settings, F6 is to add an edit. So let's get in and let's add that to my keyboard setting. I'm going to come to the edit category and add edit is located right here. I'm simply going to take add edit and I'm going to drag it and drop it down onto F6 on the keyboard. This has now been mapped to, appropriately enough, add edit. Now, something I do want to point out and something that I always recommend to editors, some listen, some don't. Do not change the default keyboard layout of your keyboard settings. Don't change anything from the number one all the way down to the space bar. Now, why is that? Well, in situations where, let's say you're going to go on the road, you're going to install Media Composer first somewhere else, to be honest, you don't want to be getting in and worrying about bringing settings, taking settings, updating settings. Do I need to get in and relay, my, relay out my keyboard with 97 different keys? That all takes time. Okay, I rather just get in and just remap 10 buttons at the top of my keyboard to change those ones up as opposed to remapping the entire keyboard. Now, I do want to point out that you can hold shift as a modifier key on the keyboard settings. You can get in and add some more shortcuts to the standard keyboard. But again, my best recommendation, leave this keyboard layout, except for the function keys, what its default setting is. Now, a couple other things I want to point out in the command palette. The next option that we have over here at the bottom, you'll notice that we're setting up a button to button reassignment, meaning I can take any one of these commands, let's use remove edit, and I'm going to map that to F5. I'm adjusting a button to a button. I also have the ability to get in and make this the active palette. What does that mean? What that means is that, let's say hypothetically, I was to have the play window open. If I start hitting commands inside of the command palette with active palette selective, Media Composer is going to start doing the commands that I'm clicking in here because it is active. Now, the other one that's a big one, and this is one that I like to use all the time, is the menu to button reassignment. I'm going to select menu to button reassignment, and how this function works is the first thing we're going to do is select a button on our keyboard that we want to map a menu command to. Let's use F3. I'm going to click on F3. You'll notice that it highlights. Now I'm going to navigate to the tools drop down and I'm going to use my shortcut for F3, which is the audio mixer. I'm simply going to select the audio mixer. It's going to get mapped to F3. I'm just going to switch this back to a button to button reassignment. And now when I hit F3 on the keyboard, you'll see the audio mixer command makes the audio mixer appear inside of Media Composer first. Now, a couple of things that I do want to point out inside of our settings window. You're going to notice on the right that we have a whole bunch of different uh, tags that basically say user, project, site, user. What does that mean exactly? Well, a project setting is a setting specifically for this project. It does not follow the user from project to project. Then we have a site setting, meaning a setting that is created for this specific site, this entire computer. And last but certainly not least, we have the user setting, which is a setting that follows the user no matter what project they are working in. Now, something else that I should point out is that, for example, you'll notice that I deleted the keyboard setting when we first got started. What I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to duplicate the keyboard layout here, the keyboard setting, because what this gives me the ability to do is let's just say I have a keyboard layout for my standard editing. Okay, Maybe what I want to do is with this keyboard setting, I want to set it up for audio mixing specifically. Let's use that as an example. So I'm going to punch in audio mixing. Okay, And maybe I want to have another keyboard layout that's going to be for visual effects. 
Okay, so this is how you can now get in and create different settings for the keyboard, for example, that you can now easily toggle back and forth by simply checkboxing one of the different keyboard commands and you can now easily set up one, two, three, four. You can set up a whole bunch of different keyboard layouts so that you can easily get at those commands that you want to get at literally with the click of a mouse. Okay, now we've talked about settings. I think we're now ready to start bringing media into Media Composer first. And we're going to talk about that in our next lesson. Now, as I wrap up this lesson, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsors, starting out with Video Guys. They are my preferred reseller for both video hardware and software. And when you're ready to make the next step to the full version of Media Composer, Video Guys will be there to help you make your upgrade as smooth as possible. You can check them out at videoguys.com and you can use the coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Video Guys purchase. I also want to thank Boris FX and the Boris FX family of visual effects software, including Generate Sapphire and Imagineer Systems Mocha. Don't forget, you can work with all their effects inside of Media Composer first by making your purchase through the Avid Marketplace, and you can check them out at borisfx.com. And finally, I want to thank Rampant Design Tools, the leaders in QuickTime-based style elements that work perfectly inside of Media Composer first. You can check out their entire product line at rampantdesigntools.com and even download over 40 free 4K effects at 4kfree.com. And finally, if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.